the YouTube. Bruce Hugh here. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. And those of you who don't celebrate Thanksgiving, hope you had a good uh, Thursday. And hope you have a good weekend coming up. So, ended up uh, getting a couple tins of the Kringle Flake, the 2022. Local B&M had them. Um, I got two tins. Uh, probably would have got more if they would have got more, but they only got eight tins in. Um, we've been hounding them to get to pipe tobacco, and they haven't gotten any new pipe tobacco in for like the past year. They haven't got any of the CND releases or nothing, so they are having to get them online, and we keep telling them, hey, man, we'd rather buy them from you, you know, a little bit more expensive maybe. Well, if you just buy a couple of tins, it's really not because then you got to pay for shipping, so. But, um, This is one I'm definitely looking or uh, you know look forward to for sure. So let me go ahead and pop it real quick. Um, been smoking it for about I don't know maybe ten minutes, but uh, I literally just got this like just a couple minutes ago. Um, the downtown place had it, but they brought it to the local winery, which is right across the street from my house. So um, I got two tens and a couple of buddies got a ten of it. And uh, she said she had one ten left. So all of us uh, local guys, you know, like I said, that's why I said I didn't want to be greedy. If they'd have got twenty tens, I'd have maybe got three or four. But you know, ten tens isn't a lot to go around. So it comes in really, really. This is like half the flake I just put into that. This is how big the flakes are. If I can, I'm not going to try to break it to get it out. But that's how big the tens are, or the um, the flakes are in the ten. I'll break it if I try to get it apart. But it's just kind of one big stuck together deal here um but like i said the flake this is not even, this is about half a flake flakes or so with this little part too um but and then you get this little black thingy in there that sutliff always gives you just to compare it real quick to uh, what the 2020 looked like thanks uh my buddy tim he had uh probably about a quarter ten of 2020 left and he shared it with us last meetup we had so we could have some and um this is the 2020 that's what that looks like kind of very similar in color um this one uh they didn't have all have parique i don't remember if the last two were straight virginians or not but um i know i'm pretty sure this one was straight virginia though but it doesn't smell as musty as that one the uh this one smells pretty um barnyardy musty type of type of thing the new one anyways but let me get to smoking it because i'm sure you guys want to have me smoke it and like i said just give you my thoughts on it that's all i can do but uh real quick on the 2022 anyways it says after being aged for over 20 years U.S. grown Red Virginias are Cavendished and combined with Mark Ryan's 2003 Perique to create a one-of-a-kind blend. The whole leaf is then pressed and sliced into broken flakes. Um, that's a pretty good description of it, I would say. But like I said, I've been smoking this for about 10 minutes. And um, right off the bat, it's, it's definitely different than the other two. But, um... At the same time, it's still good. It's, uh, so far anyways, it's, um, the 2020 to me stood out because it had, it almost had this like McClellan kind of essence to it. You know what I mean? Like it had this like, uh, um, tanginess, like a little vinegary tanginess to it. And you can smell a little bit of that and taste a little bit of that in this. But I think the way they Cavendish this one, it almost seemed like, uh, you get more of like a, dark fruit sour um i get almost like i've been getting like a not necessarily a wine but like a grape like a, a grape drink you know what i mean like um grape juice like a grape juice type of thing but it does have a bit of tanginess and sourness to it as well with that 
I was afraid it was going to be too spicy because of the Perique. Um, but it's not too spicy at all. Like, especially in, the, in this fight. This is a, my um, Moonshine Canadian. Love this fight. It's definitely some like candied dark fruit in there for sure. Um, the reason I say it's candied, you guys know when they Cavendish stuff, it kind of takes on that, that kind of flavor. It's definitely got a good bit of underlying and sweetness, especially on initial draw. Um, the aftertaste is kind of, I would say it's a little maybe drier and tangier kind of. But on the retro hail, that's when you get the that perique spice plumminess kind of to it. You don't get it on the tongue at all. I don't get any spice on the tongue at all in this one. So those of you that were worried about having too much perique in this, I don't think they ever did it. For my taste, anyways. Um, the good thing is I can smoke on this because I think it comes out. Does it come out the second? I think. I forget. I forget when it actually supposed to be released for sale or whatever. Um, they were able to release this out. They got a deal evidently with their uh, manufacturer. They're able to just put it out whenever they get it, I guess. But, um, or their vendor, whoever the hell it is. But uh, I'll be smoking on this the next couple of days before I decide whether I'm buying any more or not. Because it's hard to tell just off of an, an initial first. To me, anyway, some people can do that. But to me, I'll probably, um, and not just that, if you let it sit open for a couple of days. Then it kind of changed a little bit. But, um, yeah, so far so good. But yeah, it does have a, like a, you know, that tanniny, like grape juice, dark, the dark grape juice that you drink, you know, like the church wine type of stuff. It's not really wine, that's grape juice. Kind of tastes like that a little bit for some reason. Doesn't seem to be real strong, which is why I say I don't think they put a lot of Perique in this. Because um, a real, real heavy Perique blends can kind of get to me sometimes. I'm trying to slow down here. But yeah, I'm trying not to make the video too long. And, but I don't want to smoke it too quick and over smoke it either and heat it up. But yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good. I would say, like I said, I would say the 2020 um, wasn't as complex. But it, the 2020 definitely, to me, for some reason, was more in line with like a McClellan straight Virginia. Um, this one, to me, had a little bit of that characteristic. But this one, um, and I wouldn't say it's real, real complex. But it's definitely complex enough to where it's, you know, a good solid smoke to where it's just not like a one note thing. I mean, you get a little bit of a tang in there. You get, like I said, that, that dark grape sweetness to me. Um, you get some spice on the retro hail. It's like a white pepper, you know, red peppery type of thing. It's not black pepper at all, in my opinion. Of course, it was wet. That's why I'm having to light it. But yeah, like right now, like on the slow draw, you basically get that like um, dark fruity grapey type of type of flavor to it when you're drawing on it. And I'm in the garage, so man, is it windy outside? It is whew, really, really windy, and it's it's burning down to a nice fine white ash, white ash as you can see. Um, and the one thing I will say about these. Uh, these Sutliff flakes, they break up and go in your pipe really, really easy. They're um, they're kind of like a, you know how when you get the broken cake, the C&D broken cakes, and it's just, you take a little bit and just rub it out real quick, and it just rubs up really, really easy and goes in your pipe? That's the way this is. So they do that really, really well. I would say Sutliff um, does it maybe better than anybody, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I should have probably dried it out a little bit because it's wet, but. Just 
trying to see if I get anything out of it more than that. Um, it does have a slight amount of earthiness to it as well. Doesn't really have any cigarette -y type of flavors to it, which is a good thing, which usually I get that from Burley, so. Yeah, when I smoke it tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll probably let it dry out for about 30, 40 minutes or so. And uh, it'll smoke better too, like that. The heat, the the pipe's not heating up at all. It's just, I'm just, it's just wet. But yeah, a little bit of sourness, a little bit of tang, a little bit of tartness. The initial draw is very pleasant. Like I said, that grapey flavor is still there. Um, and then whenever you want to get some spice with it, you just rush for hair. So yeah. It's a good holiday blend. Um, I still say that the 2020 was the best. Um, I think I like it better than last year's though. Last year's to me uh, was good, but not great. And I'm curious how to, to see how this is going to do after about a week or so of just sitting in the tin like this. I mean, sometimes even a couple of days helps. But anyways, that's my initial impressions. Um, I'm going to wait to figure out if I'm going to order more of this. Um, right now, I'm happy with two tins. Um, but it's good. And that's, uh, if you're into that type of stuff, and it's, like I said, I'm, I'm smoking it. It's not strong at all to me. It's probably about a... Um, quarter of the way up the scale so it's not mild mild but it's got a little nicotine to it but it's not it's not mid to medium strength at all and uh the wind's not helping either so i'm gonna go ahead and close the garage door and finish up smoking the rest of this this is jc again uh, let me know if you guys plan on getting this or if you have